thought this series was gonna be forgotten after two episodes? HA! I really should make another bridge movie. What these games have in common is that they're puzzle games, and one of them is obscure. Hint, it's both of them. Drop 2, the sequel to the hit game Drop 1. Wait, was there ever a Drop 1? If there is, then I have to see it in my own eyes. The game is published by E Games. Woo! That was close. If they had another letter, they would get a class action lawsuit. From GameStop. Woo! And it came with a free game, so it's like having twins. So for some reason, I have to install something called the Game Butler. What is this? Team for Dummies? So you have four modes to play, and your objective is to line up three of the same color by switching the gems. It's actually fun! I recommend using the mouse that it is much easier to play the game. The pace of it is just right, although the game stops when you have four balls lined up or you cause a triple chain reaction. There are times that a drop store happens, so hope you have enough space to continue playing! The first mode is just a basic one, the second is where you have to remove the blocks with stars, the third is the first where you switch the blocks vertically, and the final one's a bit confusing. The crystal gems turn the normal ones into steel, they can't explode when you line up. Stone balls won't move if you try switching, and you must put the golden ones on the bottom before they disappear as they can cause a level up. Yeah, this is too much for me. My favorite is the first one, it's just simple and easy. Just beware of the storms. The graphics are fine, no biggie. The music, however... That's amazing for a puzzle game. Shame I can't change the reader resolution, I can't seem to find a way to do it. Overall, it's actually a good overlooked game, I recommend buying it. As for that free game, why the even theme? Now here's another forgotten Tato game. Landmaker, or Builder's Block if you're in the US, was originally an arcade game in 1998 that was later ported to the PS1. Although this one is very different. Oh man, it doesn't even have the cheer for name calling. The game has a puzzle mode, battle mode, and the arcade original mode, which is an almost arcade perfect port if I say so myself. So the objective here in puzzle mode is to make a building by launching these blocks to form squares. If you succeed, you can either finish the level or keep playing until you're satisfied with a better building, as it gives you a good bonus. That and finishing without restarting. Just don't get over the edge. There are special blocks that either remove or change the blocks to the ones you launched at it. Like Puzzle Bubble, the blocks can rebound and the board also drop if you launch an amount of blocks. The main objective is to make a city, and if you get a certain amount of people living in it, it will unlock a region. In arcade mode, it's a totally different beast. Here you have to make houses and then destroy them so that the stones on the opponent's side fall down quicker, and also sending more blocks. You have to win to conquer a land. It's actually more intense. I can't even decide which one's my favorite though. The relaxed puzzle mode or the action-packed arcade mode. This is so difficult. The graphics are good. The puzzle one has simple 3D graphics, which is appealing to me. I like that aesthetic much. Whereas the arcade one is sprite-based and they look great. The sounds are great as well. The music on the former part is a bit terrifying, mainly on the main menu. The music can get relaxing though, mainly on the second puzzle song. Overall, it's also another good overlook game. Man, it's all underrated jams today. Get it? Jams? I believe I should make a better jokes next time. Shit, am I forgetting something? <laughs> <laughs>